Hey, how's it going? Big Yumbo here. I'm just gonna take some photos today. Just a couple sets. Here's a Faraday shirt. So I've got my stack over here, which uh, at night, before I go to bed, I just make sure I've got my 30 ready to go. I don't always do that, but when I do, the next day is much easier because I just can pull from the stack and um, just makes life a lot easier because they're already ready to go. Makes the whole photo process better. Make sure everything's lint roll, all the tags are gone. Uh, for shirts, if it's like a cotton shirt like this, they'll just stick right up on here on this piece of material, which I got from Joanne's Fabric. Got a couple different lights. I got a ring light, got another ring light, and I got these Chinese photo lights, which kind of suck. This is a piece of insulation board, foam insulation board. I've already shown it. You can just type in like big gumbo photos or something and it might come up. This is an old iPhone from like 2016 or something. I actually tried to do my photos with my new iPhone, which I'm filming with right now and last night, but there was like, it was complicated. There's like way too many settings now. So I'll just keep using this old phone and use the, uh, new iPhone for videos. I get the full front, I get the chest, I get the tag. I usually get the the cuffs. Then I throw the shirt up, get a picture of the inside tag. Basically, we're just looking for the material and the style, if there is one. That might be a style. For like modern shirts, I always wanna get a picture of the style code. Throw it around them to the back. The reason I like using this hanger sometimes also is because you just flip the shirt. It's super easy to flip over. It doesn't take nearly as long. And you have like some, instead of holding my hand here, the hanger holds it there. And I'm not trying to go fast. I just try to do like two minutes per photo is fine. I know some people can do it in like 30 seconds. When I try to do it, in 30 seconds, I mess a whole bunch of stuff up. So here we got the pit to pit. Then we got the length. And when I do these photos, I try to just do it as, cause some people will do like one like this, one like this. If you just do it at an angle like this, yeah, I'm photographing it. You don't have to do all that cause they can close up, see the 24 inches. And then they can also see the reference that it's pit to pit, you know what I mean? Then I fold it up. The shirt's kind of longer. You gotta do three folds. So you gotta do like one like this, one like this, one like this. Grab my bag. I think these are nine by 12 inch bags from Amazon. I stick it in the bag over here on my stack. I'm trying to pre, like imagine what you're gonna say here. So I can answer your questions before you ask them, because you're gonna ask them. Over here, I don't know if you can see this, I got my little roll of consecutive number stickers. And then over here, we've got my boxes And these slide onto my racks in the garage. So every time you do one of them, they just, this just slips right into the back of the box. And then the next one goes behind that and then behind that. And then you get a new box. It's real simple. Uh, let's do some pants. Here's a pair of sticky pants. So they stick right on there. That's good. A little lint. Don't want to spend too much time lint rolling. Sometimes there's a lot of lint. I'll just say there's a lot of lint throughout showing our photos. So I get the full pants. I get close up on the top, close up on the ankles. Then I hit the measurements on the front side. This part is the part where I could, I need to like figure out a better way to do it ergonomically. 
So I do the inseam. You're not gonna be able to see this very well. Just imagine what this looks like, okay? You're gonna see my butt. Got the inseam photo, then I get the leg opening photo. I pull it down. So I set my phone down. I pull it down. I grab the rise, boom. Set my phone down again and grab the waist. Grab the phone, boom. Probably a better way to do that. And I've been kind of thinking about it for quite a while. I can't quite figure out the best way. Some people say a lanyard, but that will mess me up because it'll be hanging down. I do a lot of bending over. It's gonna mess me up in a lot of other ways. So I don't really wanna have a lanyard. We also got the inside tag photo. These are true classic pants. Got the one there. Back, butt, ankles. And then for pants, the way to fold pants is, it's easier to do it on the thing, but fold them in half, pull out the butt, pull this up, tuck in the butt, and then you do a three roll. Usually I do it on the table, but that's how you get it to exactly, uh, what, nine by 12 inches. Slide in the bag. And I take a picture of the uh, custom skew there. Did I remember to do that on the first one? Let's check. I forgot because I was talking, so. Just grab a picture of that. That is probably the most forgotten photo. That one and the size tag are probably the most forgotten photos I have. Dude, got a pair of FUBU jean shorts. I'm gonna start this one off with a picture of the back because I think the back looks cooler. When you list jean shorts, you wanna put jorts in the title. You wanna put denim, jean, because people will search jean shorts, they'll search jorts, they'll search denim shorts. Couple loose stitches on the uh, embroidery there, get a nice photo of that. there for a second. Boom, full thing. We go with the inseam. And on shorts, I've started doing a photo of the full length of the short because it's a common question that I get. I kind of try to alter my photos to like what questions am I getting? I get leg opening. I get full out seam length. I never get rise. I've never gotten rise. Well, I have photos of the rise, but I almost wonder if rise, if I could drop that. Probably best not to drop it though. Now these jean shorts, I did something shady here. They said like, they were like a youth size 18 or something. So, I conveniently slice that right off the tag. Just cut it off. And then um, when I list it, I'm gonna say, no size on tag. Measures men's 29 or whatever. Cause you got a lot more buyers in the men's department than you do in the little kids department. But these are huge, so. Nice baggy Y2K denim shorts. Sorry. I got another thing of bags over here. Probably should figure out a better spot for that. Maybe over here by these bags. These are bigger bags. What are these? Probably like 12 by 15 or something like that. Again, just something from Amazon. switch to just using all bigger bags 
but I like the way the smaller ones hold everything nice and tight. Makes it easier to ship out. All right, we got a hoodie. I hate hoodies. Sometimes the hood doesn't stay up, but this one's gonna stay up fine. This is a great video to film because I'm actually getting some work done. Get the full thing, get the graphic. There's a little Patagonia logo on the side there. Especially with Patagonia, you wanna show all the logos because that's why people buy it. For sweatshirts, I always get a picture of the inside material to show like what kind of fleece we're dealing with. Is it fleece? Is it terry? Get a picture of the full tag. Get a picture of the styled code, which is also going to be on the back side of that tag. Flip it. Now, I'm open to receiving lots of comments that are like, hey, you should do it this way. Oh, you should do it this way. You can leave those comments. Some of those are helpful. I might get defensive, but go ahead and leave those comments. Let me get the link. So I used to do it this way and then this way, but I figured out this way and this way is slightly faster for some reason. Oh, there's like little pockets on the side here, so I'm gonna get a picture of that. And I, I fully utilize those 24 photos. As much as I can. I give that one like a roll. Use one of these bigger bags here. I feel like because I'm talking, I'm probably forgetting from photos, so it's gonna suck later when I'm listing and I have to go back, pull this stuff out. And rephoto it. That's one of the most annoying things you could possibly have to do. I'll do a new box and just throw it on top of the other boxes. Right, let's skip to this Peter Millar thing. See if it sticks. It does kind of stick, but we're going to pretend it doesn't stick so I can use this guy. Because it's going to have a better shape in the photos. This thing's super wrinkly. Uh, sometimes I'll throw this over to the side and steam it, but I just don't even feel like doing that today. Let me double check you can see all this on the camera. Oh, really good wide angle lens on this. Bam, bam. Get a picture of that little uh, Butcher Joseph and Co. thing on the side. Bam. Get the inner tag with the size and the brand. Oh, we have like a little uh, stain on the sleeve here. Let's see if it just will scratch off for me. Come on. Pretty much. All right, I'm just going to say small mark on wrist now. I mean, that would probably just come off with like a wet paper towel, but I don't feel like doing all that. Inner tag material. Since this is a modern Peter Millar from 2022, it looks like, I'm gonna take a photo of the style code. Um, flip it. Get back. And I don't take, I don't go much faster than this, honestly, when I'm doing this, you know, by myself, not filming. I just try to stay at a nice, steady pace. Sometimes I have a uh, little stopwatch here and I'll be like, okay, I gotta do, every time it gets to 10 minutes, I have to have five of them done. And that will, will speed you up. And take it off this thing. I'll just fold this over here. Folding. I need to learn how to do the vintage t-shirt fold. There's a specific way all the vintage kids fold their shirts. And it makes it look pretty cool. It wouldn't fit in one of my bags, but I just want to know how to do it. 
Because it like displays the graphic nicely. It's cool. Get a photo of that. Hopefully I didn't forget any pics there. Now we'll do this Kimes Ranch hoodie. Actually getting quite a bit of work done doing this. This is kind of nice. Double check we're recording. That would suck if I wasn't recording. And we are recording. Let's move you over here a little bit. Yeah, you can see the boxes. Get the full thing. You got a drawstring, the logo, the fuzzy wear on the fabric. The wrist hoodies. I almost always forget to get the inside tag. I don't know why. And this is more of like a Terry. I don't know if you can see this. It's like Terry rather than fleece. So make sure you get a shot of the inner material so they can see what they're working with once they get it. Get the uh, material. Flip it over. Oh, he is. Bada bang. Pull out the pits a little bit. Get this guy. Boom. And then the length photo, which you can't see because my butt. Nice fold. So, what I do is the side, you kind of pull it in. You get really good at estimating. Basically, when both these are folded, you want it to be about the length of your bag. So, 12 inches, maybe an inch shorter. Fold it in like that. Fold it in like that, bring it down. Now that should be about the length of the bag you're gonna use. Probably have to use a bigger bag on this one, but I still try to make it so it could fit in the smaller bag. Cause that's about the size of a flat, uh, padded flat rate or one of my shipping poly bags. Get one roll, two rolls, and boom. If you wanted to do that in a padded flat rate, it easily would fit or a like uh, 10 by 13 poly bag, which is shit pretty cheap. Space layer, flame resistant. Get the full thing. Get the crotch area, the logo, the ankles. The inseam. I'm not gonna do the leg opening on this, but there's a loose thread right there. I'll take a look at that. Rise. Waist. Don't kind of pin it with my finger because slide down. Tag. Other tag is super worn, so I'll get a photo of that. Too worn to read. Interior tag. Get the booty. Booty, a little bit of fuzzy wear there, so we'll grab a pick of that. Again, the fold is half, half, much harder to do this just holding it. If you do it on a table, pretend my body's the table. Half, half, fold in that booty. One, two. Usually you just do it on a table, it's much quicker and easier. That looks terrible. That will fit in one of these. <sighs> and I hate working. Right, how many 
have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 23 to go. I'm not gonna show you all these, but you know. Maybe I'll just do 10. You're crazy if you watch this entire video because it's gonna get pretty monotonous here. A lot of lint on this Lulu shirt. Does anybody know the best lint rollers? I've experimented with tons of them. These ones suck. These ones are almost like Velcro-y. All of them suck. These are expensive. I got these at Costco. I try everything. I figured, well, maybe the expensive ones would be so good that I like barely have to get new ones. No, they pretty much just all suck. All my rollers suck. Drink Gatorade. It's kind of like a faded black color, which I hate. Should pick it out. Lulu logo, wherever the hell it is. Where is it? Boom. Not going to be a size on this one, unfortunately. Do some more lint. But you see how it flips so easy when it's on the hanger? That's what's beautiful about the hanger. It's not necessarily faster, probably, but it makes me quite a bit less angry, which makes my endurance doing this longer. Because I get pretty antsy around, once I get to like 20, like, oh my god, I want to do something else, please. I hate this. But if I never have to like bend over in a weird way or straighten out shirts awkwardly, uh, it makes life better all around. You just have to remind yourself when you're doing it like, this is super easy in the grand scheme of things. Like if you compare this to a regular job, this is very easy. I'm just by myself in a room, chilling, listening to music, listening to a podcast. If, it, if you were like any other job and they were like, hey, do you want to go do this for two hours? You would say, yeah, please, please. You don't have to deal with any people. I mean, I would say I would do it all day long, but for some reason, it sucks. All right, that was a Lulu shirt. Now we're on to a marine lighter shirt. Boom, boom, so full photo, the chest, the inner tag. Kind of maybe up on one of those buttons so we can see the pattern pretty good. Then we get inside to the material tag. I don't know where it is. I don't really see a material tag. There's a tag, but it doesn't say the material. It's like maybe, oh, there it is. It doesn't say the material. Oh, no, it says cotton. Never mind, sorry. Boom. Go here at the back. Pull out the pits. Get the chest measurement. Boom. Boom. I'm gonna fold it on the table because it's just easier. Throw it in the bag. To this flint and tinder button up. That's right, the energy is fading away. And it just gets lower and lower and lower as we get to the 30 items. I have a nice little herringbone pattern on this one. Like a chevron. 
material are we working with here? Just cotton. It almost feels like linen. It has like a kind of a snaggy texture to it. Can you see? The snaggy texture. I think it's supposed to look like that on this one. Get the back. Pull the pits out. Do this and this. If this was a dressier shirt, I might do like the sleeve length. Kind of just do measurements based on what I feel like. Since I have the sleeve out, I might as well do it. So I just do it from the shoulder seam to the end. And I can photo that. Um, for a super fancy gesture, maybe you want to get the shoulders from the seam to the seam. There's also the neck to the shoulder. Maybe the uh, like the hem opening over here. The more expensive and the fancier it is, the more measurements I do. That uh, shot or Scott jacket, the leather jacket I sold for like $375 the other day. Uh, I did so many measurements on it. Got the guy extra measurements, got him the sleeve, got him the shoulder measurement. After I'd already listed it, I pulled it back out. And he returned it. He opened a return like two days ago. That sucks. It's almost never worth it to get extra measurements for someone. I can't think of a single time it was ever worth it. So either just ignore them. If you ignore them, you're going to have to block them. Because if you ignore them and then they buy it and it doesn't fit, they can leave you feedback that says, Buyer wouldn't respond to messages, sent me a shirt that was way smaller than it said in the listing or something like that. And if you didn't respond to the messages, like, it's kind of your fault, right? So, if you're going to ignore them, you have to block them. Got a Pendleton shirt, which is, got a lot of fuzzy wear on it. And it's going to measure smaller than the tagged size here. Definitely have to get a sleeve measurement on this one because I tried it out and the sleeves are pretty short. Um, that up a little bit. So for fuzzy wear, I try to get like a nice like angled photo like this where the light kind of hits through the pilling and the, and there's lint on this. So I'm gonna get a picture of that. Cause I just don't even want to, I could spend 45 minutes on this and it's going to look exactly the same. It's not worth it. This item is worth it to sell in my opinion with some fuzzy wear and some lint and shrunken the Pendleton wool flannel. In perfect condition, probably like 50 bucks. I think I sold two recently for about that much. Give it a nice fold. This one's kind of fatter, so I gotta stick it in the bigger bag. A pair of jeans what are these 517 so you definitely want to get the leg opening on a pair of boot cut jeans you definitely want to get the leg opening on a pair of baggy jeans pull it nice and 
and tight. Then we got the lamps. We got that. Get the rise. Get the waist. And you know, artistically, your listing will have a better flow if you put the measurements at the end. But practically, it's better to just jam the listings or the uh, photo or what the hell am I trying to say? It's better to jam the measurements up in the front of your listing rather than having them in the back of the listing. Like you'll have a better flow if they're in the back, but you want to stick them up front so that the people are forced to look at the measurements. Do you know what I'm saying? I had a speech impediment moment there, but I think you get it. Same with any flaws, like if there's a really big flaw, it's going to be second photo. I don't understand when people try to hide the flaws and then they get a return and they're like, I showed it in the listing. Most people don't scroll past the third or fourth photo. They're like, oh, that looks about right. And then they buy it. Because people, they don't want to, like online shopping, if you do it, I do a lot of online shopping. It's basically... You're trying to convince yourself to buy something and you have another voice that says, don't buy it, don't buy it. And you're trying to shut the don't buy it voice up. So you're kind of just pulling the trigger as quickly as you can and then forgetting about it. And then it shows up later and it's like you got a present. So you have to like understand online shopping. And it's, uh, you want, so you want the flaws up front so they are forced to see them because they don't want to see the flaws. They want to just buy it. They want forget about it, and then have it show up. And I want to buy it as quickly as possible, right? That's why you'll have people buy something, send you an offer, or buy it outright, and then the next day they're like, hey, I actually don't think this is gonna fit. Can you please cancel? Because like when they kind of sobered up from their online shopping high, uh, they had buyer's remorse. And I'm sure a lot of returns that are for not fit are just buyer's remorse. But, you know, you sell clothing online, so you just have to understand that. It's not a big deal. You just have to... A certain amount of your sales are going to get returned or canceled or whatever. It's in the bigger bag. So then we got the photo. I hope I didn't forget any photos on these. All right, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What do we got uh, minute-wise on this video here? I, my computer can't handle too much. All right, I'm going to do one more pair of jeans. Super black jeans. Change it up, yeah? These have, like, fading, like, marbling all throughout, so I want to get good pictures of that. thing crotch this is a 501 I think right yeah so you want to get a picture of the button fly because some people will just call all Levi's 501 so you want to like say like hey I know what I'm talking about a 501 is a button fly you're getting what it says in the title I'm showing all these faded marks throughout and I want to have a bunch of them so that they can't just skip past that they have to acknowledge what's in the photo by having, like, what is he showing me? And then they mean, okay, okay, it's faded. I got it. These aren't necessarily faded in a great way. Usually those marbling marks are from, like, if you wash it and you leave it in the wash wet for, like, a day, it'll turn out like that. So it's not, like, a cool workwear distress look. It's, like, a forgot it in the wash look. This is a modern pair, so I just flipped this up and you got the material content right there. And then underneath you also have the style um, and the size again. And some like Chinese writing or whatever. Let's grab that. Some white tongue there. Um, 
Bam, get some of those faded lines. Bam, bam. Get the tab, maybe, whatever. And then get the ankles. Oh, did I do the leg opening? I forgot. If I think I forgot, I just do it again. Fold it up. And I could move things in closer to me and make it more, you know, more or whatever, but yeah, we're just going to keep it like this for now, unless you give me a suggestion that I really like. So thanks for watching.